27th March 2019, Defence Research and Development Organisation, an agency of the Government of India, charged with the military's research and development, launched a ballistic missile towards an Indian satellite and successfully destroyed it within three minutes of its launch. Dubbed Mission Shakti, the project showed military prowess of India to the world and helped the country enter the elite group of nations equipped with anti-satellite power. Anti-satellite weapons are space weapons designed to incapacitate or destroy satellites for strategic military purposes, although no such weapons have ever been utilized in war. Currently, USA, Russia, China and India have demonstrated this ability with India being the latest to test the weapon. Anti-satellite weaponry can broadly be categorized into three classes. Direct Fire a direct fire system is a kinetic kill system designed to physically destroy or damage a satellite using a ground or a vehicle based system instead of electronically disrupting its orbit or mission. A direct energy weapon. It is a high powered laser or microwave weapon designed to either disrupt or electrically damage a satellite. The direct energy weapon cannot physically destroy a satellite but rather makes the satellite unoperational. Microsatellite. Man-made objects weighing less than 500 kilograms are considered a microsatellite and can be easily weaponized. Because of a satellite's high relative velocity to another satellite, any collision would destroy both satellites. And microsatellites have the advantage of being cheaper, more maneuverable and harder to track. The very first anti-satellite weapon test was conducted in 1950s by US Air Force as a part of the Bold Orion missile tests. The missile was fired as an air-launched ballistic missile from a B-47 bomber aircraft and came as close as 6.4 kilometers from the Explorer 6 satellite. Had the missile been fitted with a nuclear warhead, the satellite would have been destroyed. Thus, the mission was considered a partial success. The Soviets experimented with a range of anti-satellite systems, including surface-to-air missiles, directed energy weapons that used particle beams and lasers, orbital satellites, and space stations equipped with cannons, etc. They succeeded in February 1970 with their IS system, a co-orbital system that approached its target over time and exploded with sharp nails when close enough to the target. It took 90 to 200 minutes or 1 to 2 orbits for the interceptor to get close enough to the target. The interceptor guided by an onboard radar and was effective up to 1 km from the target. The February 1970 mission achieved 32 sharpnel hits to the target, with each hit penetrating about 100 mm into the armor. With the fall of the Soviet Union, all anti-satellite weapon research was halted, as both Russia and USA lost interest in ASAT program and deemed it unnecessary. It was not until 2007 that the interest in anti-satellite weapons re-emerged. On 11th January 2007, People's Republic of China successfully destroyed a defunct Chinese weather satellite using an SC-19 ASAT missile. The missile was launched from a TEL vehicle and destroyed the satellite in a head-on collision at a very high relative velocity. Since their first successful anti-satellite missile program, China further tested their ASAT in 2013 and again in 2018. The latest nation to enter into the anti-satellite club was India when it fired its ballistic interceptor on 27th March 2019. The interceptor was able to strike Microsat R after 168 seconds of launch at 300 km altitude in low Earth orbit, thus successfully testing the anti satellite weapon. But as much as these anti satellite weapons look and sound futuristic, these systems have faced a lot of criticism and have a fair amount of limitations. Majority of the criticism of the anti-satellite weapon is drawn towards the amount of debris they create in the atmosphere when the satellite is destroyed. A 1985 test by US destroyed a one-ton satellite creating thousands of debris that were larger than one centimeter. It took nearly a decade for most of the debris to decay. The Chinese anti-satellite test mentioned earlier created the largest single space debris incident in history creating more than 1 million pieces of debris, with 35,000 pieces being 1 cm or larger and 2,300 pieces being the size of a golf ball. 
The Indian anti-satellite weapon in comparison only created around 270 pieces of debris and as the test was conducted in low earth orbit, the debris is said to decay within two months. Then there's the debate on why the anti-satellite weapons were developed at all. The anti-satellite weapons were developed to hinder the enemy nation's military operations, but a larger number of questions have been raised on their effect in hindering the enemy's military. In the modern era of defense research intelligence, surveillance is not done through a single but an array of satellites operating in unison, and even if all the satellites are deemed unoperational, ISR aircrafts can take their position within minutes. Another major limitation is their ineffectiveness on GPS and communication satellites. GPS satellites operate at higher altitudes of 20,000 km, and communication satellites are even higher at 36,000 km, putting them out of the range of ballistic missiles. Even if these satellites could be made inoperable, other navigational and communication operations could be carried out without them. In the era of advanced military and tactical war fighting, anti-satellite weapons can prove to be a game changer. But according to current technological advancement, anti-satellite systems have a long way to go before they can be fully utilized. India's anti-satellite system struck the target at a height of 260 km, whereas nations like US and China have had successful ASAT systems up to a height of 600 to 800 km. If India has to come up to the ranks of the giant nations, they have to up their game. Just like the anti-satellite systems have a long road ahead of them, the Indian space warfare also has a long way to go.